Austin case. Oh. A full file came out in May. By July, she'd been recruited by Robert Mueller, where she was working alongside another spy movie written character who's named Brendan Van Grack. And he is to espionage what she is to terrorism. A veteran espionage prosecutor with the Justice Department. And it had been interesting enough for the Department leading the grand jury inquiry in the Eastern District of Virginia so you wrote into Michael Easterly? Flynn. When Mueller took over all matters involving yeah. Flynn in May, Brandon Van Grack was the only prosecutor from that investigation whom Mueller kept on. He dismissed everybody else. Working with Mueller for months now, we haven't known where or when they would turn up. Lucky Lou, the statement of offense against Mike Flynn, signed Brandon L. Von Grack and Zainab. Want to read some tea leaves? One good place to start might be those two names and their respective prosecutor superpowers. When it comes to winning cases, quote, Cooperators are the unsung heroes. They always know more than they think they know. Tell me more. Uh, that does it for us tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow. Now it's time for the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell. Good evening, Lawrence. Good evening, Rachel. And so here we are uh, once again at the what did the president know and when did he know it uh, if they come moment. Here, There's that scene at mar lago that's, that's in this information uh, of Michael Flynn getting the word from apparently Jared Kushner at mar lago to go ahead and as a private citizen, negotiate on behalf of the United Evil States head. with foreign countries. Stuff and right where some was President-elect Donald Trump when that conversation was going on? Did he hear Jared Kushner say that? Did he tell Jared Kushner to say that? Well, we've got, and we've got these two different points that are raised no. in the uh, statement of the offense and in the plea deal. We've got that discussion that you're talking about there, which is reportedly Jared Kushner advising Flynn to have those conversations about that UN resolution. Then we've also got Flynn talking to Mar-a-Lago, talking to somebody from the presidential transition team about his conversations with the Russian ambassador over sanctions. And NBC News is reporting the person he was talking to on that matter was KT McFarland. And the reason that ends up, I think, being really important no. is because while it is conceivable that Mike Flynn might have thought he had to answer to Jared Kushner no, 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 on the UN resolution no, 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 thing, there is no chance on earth that he ever thought he had to answer to Fox News personality KT McFarland, who had hired to be his was hired to be his deputy. So when he was speaking to KT McFarland, it wasn't to get instruction from her. She was obviously conveying word to Flynn from somebody else. And the person who NBC News reports that she was staffing at Mar-a-Lago when those conversations were happening um, was the president himself. So. Flynn has a lot to say, and I have a feeling the prosecutors know almost all of it already. Yeah, I mean, they, they wouldn't have gone through with their deal today if they didn't have it all. They, they, first of all, get a very clear outline of it in the proffer from his lawyers, as we know. And then before they get to this stage today, they have to sit with him. They have to get it all down. Uh, and Michael Flynn risks uh, committing another crime if he lies to them when he's telling them what uh, he's willing to testify to. And so uh, this is the scariest night yet in that White House. Well, yeah. And, and you know, the agreement... Yeah. Here was the U.S. Attorney yes, uh, from New Jersey yeah. from, the Bridgegate, from the Bridgegate case, right, talking to him about that negotiation. Hey. He said what really stood out for him on the court no, no, today no. was no. how there was basically no room to breathe for, for Mike Flynn in these filings. What he has agreed to cooperate with. Uh, and, and about is limitless. And the only thing that he's given a break on in terms of knowing what his fate is is on a very tiny slice of what they might conceivably charge him for. And so he's got to cooperate with Stop. them on everything, up to like now taking you know a polygraph if they want him to, engaging in covert operations on behalf of the prosecutors if they want him to. He has to do everything, cooperate with them on everything, and the only thing they're promising him a break on uh, is lying to the FBI. They haven't charged him with anything else, which means that they can dump all of that on him. Anything they've got.
uh, without restriction, depending on whether or not he gives them what they want. And not just him, his son. His son is sitting there uh, liable for possible criminal charges uh, if Michael Flynn doesn't deliver no. exactly what he's promised to deliver. Yeah, I mean, it's it's this is a remarkable human drama for all the people involved here. Um, we, I, I think, as a country, it's important right now to watch for how the president um, weighs his pardon power and whether or not he does try to individually end, try to not just push pressure other people, but individually, personally, try to end this thing by going after Mueller. Um, and if he does either of those things, this is a becomes a very different situation for the country. Well, it's a, it's a little too late. Uh, you've got the, uh, someone who's already charged with that crime, and that case is already filed. Uh, I think the president's learning uh, tonight, if he hadn't learned already, just how limited uh, those powers are when it applies to this case and the stage that it's at now. Rachel, thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for sticking with us a few more sure. extra minutes tonight. I really it. appreciate it. Well, we do have a lot to cover tonight. David Frum will join us, former federal prosecutor Barbara McQuaid, Betsy Woodruff, Jonathan Capehart, Max Boot, and NBC's Ken Delanian will also join us all on the Flynn guilty plea and the Mueller investigation and the turn it has taken today. And also Norm Ornstein will join us later to discuss exactly what's happening with the Republican tax cut bill on the Senate floor tonight. And if it passes the Senate tonight, what will have to happen to pass it again through the House and the Senate in identical form? Because right now, now, those two bills are very different, but that's what it's going to take. One, at least one more big round for it to get to the president's desk for him to sign it. But first, it is too late. Sometime today, an enraged and very likely panicked president of the United States, no doubt had to be told that it is too late to use his ultimate power, the only seemingly absolute power granted to the President of the United States in the Constitution, the power to pardon. In practical terms, the presidential power to pardon is not the superpower that it might appear to be. A close reading of the Constitution shows that there is an exception to the pardon power written right into the Constitution. He shall have power to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses against the United States, except in cases of impeachment. And so, no, the president cannot pardon himself to avoid impeachment. The president cannot pardon the vice president to avoid impeachment of the vice president. If, for example, Michael Flynn were to offer testimony to Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller, now that he's cooperating with the Special Prosecutor, that would implicate Donald Trump or Mike Pence in crimes. But today, President Trump, no doubt, had to be schooled in the utter uselessness of his power to pardon Michael Flynn. Before Michael Flynn was allowed to plead guilty to the felony of lying to the FBI today in exchange for either a light sentence or possibly no sentence at all, Michael Flynn had to tell Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller everything that Michael Flynn knows. That began with Michael Flynn's lawyers making what they call a proffer, that's a legal term for what they tell the Special Prosecutor about what Michael Flynn, their client, could tell them if the Special Prosecutor offers Michael Flynn an acceptable plea deal. So before Robert Mueller and his team heard a word out of the mouth of Michael Flynn, they had already heard from Michael Flynn's lawyers, at a minimum, a very convincing outline of what Michael Flynn had to say, something very helpful to the prosecutors. And then when they questioned Michael Flynn, Michael Flynn knew that lying to them during that questioning would just be another crime that he could be charged with. And Sir Robert right Mueller right took in everything yes, Michael Flynn had to say about Donald Trump, about Donald Trump Jr., about Jared Kushner, about Jared Kushner's wife, Ivanka Trump, the president's daughter, about Attorney General Jeff Sessions, about Paul Manafort, and everyone else working in the Trump White House, the Trump transition, the Trump campaign, who is of interest to the special prosecutor. And only after Michael Flynn answered every one of those questions honestly to the satisfaction of those prosecutors was Michael Flynn offered a deal, the deal that was announced today in federal court where Michael Flynn showed up to plead guilty after walking through a gauntlet of spectators on the sidewalk shouting walk him up in echo of Michael Flynn having said this about Hillary Clinton at the Republican convention last year. Lock her up, lock her up. You guys are good. Damn right. Yeah, you're exactly right. There's nothing wrong with that. Hey, 
And you know why? And you know why? You know why we're saying that? We're saying that because if I, a guy who knows this business, if I did a tenth, a tenth of what she did, I would be in jail today. A guy who knows this business. It is too late to pardon Michael Flynn because he has already told the special prosecutor everything he knows. And for President Trump, the whole point of pardoning Michael Flynn would be to save him from having to tell the special prosecutor everything he knows. But even that would not have worked. The FBI has known pretty much all year that Michael Flynn committed the crimes that he admitted to today. If Donald Trump had pardoned Michael Flynn on the day that he fired him in February, that would have done Donald Trump absolutely no good. That simply would have meant Michael Flynn would have been forced to tell his story to the special prosecutor even sooner. If the president pardoned Michael Flynn on the day he fired him, he would have saved Michael Flynn from being indicted and pleading guilty today, but a person cannot, but a pardon cannot save you from having to testify under oath after being subpoenaed to Robert Mueller's grand jury. And so if Michael Flynn had been pardoned when he was, and, and then sworn in as a witness for Robert Mueller's grand jury, he would have no Fifth Amendment rights because then Michael Flynn would not be able to incriminate himself with his own testimony because he had already been pardoned. And so the practical problem with issuing a pardon to Michael Flynn earlier in the year was that that simply would have freed Michael Flynn, Michael Flynn up to immediately become no. an under oath witness for the special prosecutor, knowing that the special prosecutor could still indict Michael Flynn for any perjury he might commit while testifying to the grand jury. And so today was probably the day when Donald Trump was finally told by his lawyers that he cannot pardon his way out of this investigation. And it seems very clear that the Trump lawyers do not try to give Donald Trump any of the bad news before they absolutely have to. It even seems that Donald Trump's lawyers try to communicate with him and only with him in the press releases that they issue about this investigation because only Donald Trump could believe a word of those oh, press releases. Here's what the White House lawyer Ty Cobb uh -huh. said today. Uh -huh. Today, Michael Flynn, a former national security advisor at the White House for 25 days during the Trump administration and a former Obama administration official entered a guilty plea to a single count of making a false statement to the FBI. The false statements involved mirror the false statements to White House officials, which resulted in his resignation in February of this year. Nothing about the guilty plea or the charge implicates anyone other than Mr. Flynn. The conclusion of this phase of the special counsel's work demonstrates again that the special counsel is moving with all deliberate speed and and clears the way for a prompt and reasonable conclusion. And so that is clearly what Ty Cobb is trying to say to the president today in the Oval Office. Ty Cobb's just showing us his notes of what he tried to tell the president to calm him down today. Only yeah. Donald Trump, and maybe Donald Trump Jr. And, oh, sure, Eric Trump, and other people who have spent too much time in the bubble of Trump Tower could believe anything in Ty Cobb's statement today. And you know that referring to Michael Flynn as a former Obama official was President Trump's idea. That was his personal input into that statement. Michael Flynn is the linchpin in a case of obstruction of justice against Donald Trump. Michael Flynn may have already told the special prosecutor that Donald Trump knew that Michael Flynn was illegally negotiating on behalf of the United States with foreign countries while still a private citizen working on the Trump transition team. Michael Flynn may have told the special prosecutor already that Donald Trump ordered him to do that, directly or indirectly. We do know that the acting attorney general, Sally Yates, made emergency trips to the White House on January 26th and 27th to tell White House counsel Don McGahn that Michael Flynn was in big trouble with the FBI. She discussed the possibility of Michael Flynn being prosecuted for what she was reporting to the White House. She was in the White House discussing the possibility of Michael Flynn being prosecuted for what he'd already done. And Donald Trump chose to do absolutely nothing about that, nothing at all. 
and then the Washington Post. Days later revealed Michael, that Michael Flynn and the White House had been publicly lying by, by insisting that Michael Flynn had no contacts with foreign governments other than to exchange pleasantries. And only after the Washington Post exposed that, only then did President Trump fire Michael Flynn, allowed Michael Flynn to call it a resignation, 18 days after the White House was told by Sally Yates that Michael Flynn had been caught up in an FBI criminal investigation. 18 days. What were they going to do? What was President Trump going to do if the Washington Post did not report that? The day after President Trump fired Michael Flynn, knowing Michael Flynn was under FBI investigation, Donald Trump asked the director of the FBI, James Comey, to let the investigation go. This is the president speaking. I hope you can. Now, those are his exact words. Is that correct? Correct. And the reason I keep saying his words is I took it as a direction. Right. I mean, this is the president of the United States with me alone saying, I hope this. I took it as this is what he wants me to do. Now, I didn't, I didn't obey that, but that's the way I took it. That is the clear outline of the obstruction of justice case against Donald Trump. And now there's one more fact that we know about Michael Flynn, that when Donald Trump was intervening on his behalf with the director of the FBI, Michael Flynn was guilty of committing federal crimes. He admitted that today. And so Donald Trump, the president of the United States, was trying to stop an FBI investigation, an investigation into someone who worked for him, someone who was guilty. And when that FBI, and when that FBI investigation did not stop, the president then fired the director of the FBI. And when he talked about his reasons for firing the director of the FBI, he said this. Uh, what I did is I was going to fire Comey. My decision. It was not. You had made the decision before they came uh, in. I, I was going to fire Comey. Uh, I, there's no good time to do it, by the way. Uh, they, because in your letter you said I, I accepted, accepted their recommendation. Yeah, well, they so you also, had already made the decision. Uh, oh, I was going to fire regardless of recommendation. So there was really room. They, he made a recommendation. He's highly respected. Very good guy. Very smart guy. Uh, the Democrats like him. The Republicans like him. Uh, he made a recommendation. But regardless of recommendation, I was going to so fire Comey. See. And the president said in that interview that he was thinking about the Russia investigation when he fired James Comey. The special prosecutor's investigation has now landed just one person away from Donald Trump. Michael Flynn is that person, one person away from Donald Trump. Donald Trump has to be more worried tonight about the Mueller investigation than anything he has ever worried about in his entire life. Because Donald Trump doesn't understand the law himself, he may be wondering tonight if he said anything to Michael Flynn that constitutes a crime. Donald Trump might be wondering tonight if he ordered Michael Flynn to do anything that is a crime. And Donald Trump is definitely wondering tonight exactly what Michael Flynn has already told Robert Mueller. Jeff Sessions is wondering tonight what Michael Flynn has already told Robert Mueller about Jeff Sessions. Donald Trump Jr. has the same worry. Jared Kushner has already been exposed today as the person who might have the most to worry about in Michael Flynn's testimony because NBC News has confirmed that the unnamed senior transition official who was referred to in documents filed in federal court today is Jared Kushner. It was Jared Kushner who told Michael Flynn to break the law and negotiate on behalf of the United States with foreign countries while Michael Flynn and Jared Kushner were both private citizens working on the Trump transition. So it is already publicly clear that Michael Flynn has given up Jared Kushner in his plea deal with the special prosecutor. And so tonight, Jared Kushner and his lawyers should be wondering, what does Jared have to give up to the special prosecutor to get him out of trouble? If Jared Kushner needs a stay out of jail card, whose name's on that card? Who can Jared Kushner give up to the special prosecutor? We'll be right back. Gifts crafted by human hands move us the most, especially those infused with the passion of the people who create them. 
This holiday, treat yourself to a Mazda, crafted just for you. Celebrate the season with a test drive today. Mazda, driving matters. When food is good and clean and real, it's okay to crave. And with Panera Catering, there's more to go around. Panera, food as it should be. Introducing the Multi-Quick 7 from Braun, the world's number one hand blender brand. A kitchen tool so versatile that with just a quick click, it transforms from a hand blender to a chopper, to a whisk, to a food processor. It's the only 400 watt hand blender to combine unique smart speed control with patented power belt technology, making delicious meals as quick and cleanup as easy. Go online and learn how to save up to $90 and try it risk free. When you have a cold, stuff happens. <laughs> Shut down cold symptoms fast with maximum strength Alka-Seltzer Plus liquid gels. At Hagedon Corporation, creating amazing customer moments is our business. Whether booking a tea time online, buying a boat, or catching up on local news, technology is absolutely critical. After struggling with network bandwidth and limited access, we partnered with a single network provider that could go where others couldn't. Thanks to Spectrum Enterprise, we now have a fast, scalable network that powers our entire organization and delivers the customer experiences that we're famous for. Visit Spectrum Enterprise online or call today. Introducing Works Pegasus, a next generation all-in-one work table and clamping system. Pegasus holds tight at any angle. Steel reinforcement makes Pegasus super strong. A workspace, any place. Works Pegasus. These are the good times. Amazon has everything you need for the perfect holiday get-together. With free shipping on over 100 million items, you can entertain your way. For good times this holiday, visit Amazon. to overstate what a big deal this is. No one just lies. What is the lie covering up? My hope is that General Flynn will tell everything he knows. If I did a tenth, Leah, I need a a tenth of what she did, I would be in jail today. <laughs> yes, that's right. Lock her up. Julie, I need a gun. Join us now, David Fung, senior editor for the Atlantic Kendallanian Intelligence National Security Reporter for NBC News, and Barbara McQuaid, professor of law at the University of Michigan and a, a former gun. federal prosecutor. She's also an NBC okay. News and MSNBC legal contributor. And Ken, I want to go first to you about the information well, you've developed today about Jared no Kushner's gun. role uh, in the legal filings that we that uh, the special prosecutor filed today. That's right, Lawrence. Well, NBC News is reporting that Jared Kushner was the very senior transition official who tasked Mike Flynn with going to the Russian ambassador, Sergei Kislyak, about this United Nations Security Council resolution condemning Israeli settlements in the Palestinian territories that the Obama administration was going to let pass by abstaining. Now, and it, it ultimately did pass. The Israelis hated this resolution. The Trump team was very public in, in opposing it. Um, but what Mike Flynn was doing was trying to get the Russians to help them derail it. And that is part of a, 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 of a, a series of um, pieces of evidence here that the Trump team was essentially negotiating before it took office with the Russians on foreign policy. And what that oh, looks listen, like, uh, according to one person I talked to today, is a conspiracy to violate the Logan Act, a 1799 law that says you're not supposed to do that. Now, that law has never been prosecuted, and none of these documents today mention it. There's been no charges filed in that case, but it's an interesting idea, and we certainly know that as a matter of tradition, we have one administration at a time in this country, and it's not considered proper for the incoming administration to be negotiating and undercutting the current administration law. Uh, David, from uh, as we uh, close out this day of coverage on this, I just want to get your reaction to everything that has unfolded today in, in whatever order you'd like to give it. Well, in your opening monologue, Lawrence, you very powerfully described the walls closing in on the president. But there's one other piece of the wall that is closing in today, and that's on this, a, a different track at the same timeline, and that is the Senate tax bill. Now, probably a lot of people watching your show are not enthusiastic about that tax bill. But the thing to keep in mind is that bill is the devil's bargain that Senate and House Republicans have struck with Donald Trump. Once they have his signature on that bill, should it pass, 
they don't need him quite as much as they do. They have been his protective shield until no, now. They it. have their business. That's another oh, piece of closing in wall oh, that he has to contend with. Barbara McQuaid, I want to go to the uh, question that has been uh, vexing me looked. all day, uh, uh, which um, is why, why would Michael Flynn lie to an FBI agent? He had to know that lying to the FBI is a crime. Uh, he seems to also be aware that the conduct he was being asked about, if admitted to, constitutes a crime. So so do you can you do you imagine he was sitting there staring at, at, at these uh, FBI agents asking him these questions, realizing that if he admits to this, he's admitting to violations of the Logan Act. Uh, if he doesn't admit to it, he's taking his chances on getting away with the violation of the Logan Act and getting away with lying to an FBI agent, which just seems, I don't know, inconceivable to me. Yeah, it's difficult to know. You know, one thing that it's important to understand is that when FBI agents are interviewing somebody as part of an investigation, it is part of the protocol to tell the person that it is a crime to lie to the FBI. Part of that is just sort of fair notice to the witness, but the other part of it is it's an element of the crime that they'll have to prove later that the person knew it was against the law to lie to them. So the very first thing that they do, they show them their badges, make sure that everybody knows that this is for real, this is serious, and it's a crime crime to lie to the FBI. So with that, you know, this is not a passing moment of, of lapse of justice. Oh, judgment. You have to think very carefully about whether you want to tell the they truth in this situation. And so to decide to lie, um, it, it is, um, uh, it, it, it's hard to know exactly what was going on in his mind, but a number of possibilities. Uh, one is that I knew I was violating the Logan Act. I'm not sure he did. As you said, it's a fairly obscure law. Uh, that has never been prosecuted. So maybe he did, maybe he didn't know that there was a crime on the books. I have to think that most people understand that you can't undermine the foreign policy of the United States um, and that he was protecting not only himself, but others who are higher in the administration and that the stakes were high. And, and Barbara, when you say the FBI agents announced that it is a, it is a crime to lie to them, in your experience, does that become, does that function as actually an incentive for more people to tell the truth? Uh, some who might have uh, been thinking about maybe shading things a little bit. Oh, well, you do right here. causes them to make a very sober oh, assessment of what they're about to do. Go, um, what are you doing? You can't exaggerate. This is oh, my business. God. This is now oh, an oh, and we need you to answer the truth to us. And it's a crime oh, if you lie to us. You would hope that that sends a message does. to most people that you need to take this seriously and answer these questions truthfully. And if you don't, there could be very serious consequences. David Fromm, you've worked in government. Uh, I, I'm not sure anyone in government, uh, from the interns up, have to be told that the worst possible thing that can happen to you is to discover that the FBI has some things that they'd like to ask you about that you've been doing. Uh, that, that just the knowledge that they want to talk to you uh, should be enough uh, to straighten you into what you need to do, which is tell them the truth. Well, also, all the other things you might be in trouble for are actually easier to defend. I mean, you, may, uh, you may remember, uh, I mean, now it's a decade ago, the Scooter Libby Valerie Plame story. Remember that Karl Rove, who also gave up Valerie Plame's name, was never prosecuted because when the FBI or the, uh, sorry, the special prosecutor asked him, uh, he havered a little bit, but in the end he told the truth. And the truth was, it turned out, that the actual underlying act was not illegal, but, lying, but the people who lied to the FBI got in trouble. I mean, if all that Michael Flynn had done was violate the Logan Act, and he'd said to the FBI, you know, looking back on it, I probably violated the Logan Act, and I don't feel a bit sorry about it, nothing would have happened. No one's ever prosecuted for violating the Logan Act. Uh, and that makes me think it has to be more than that, because for the Logan Act, why would you lie? Uh, Ken Valanian, what does this tell us about where we are in the investigation? There have been those utterly silly uh, comments out of uh, the uh, Ty Cobb at, at the White House saying that, uh, you know, it looks like it's wrapping up soon. Those are comments that he must be trying to uh, convince Donald Trump of because no one else can believe that. 
Yeah, it wasn't a good day for Mike Flynn. It also wasn't a good day for Ty Cobb and for that position that he's been espousing for weeks, Lawrence. Clearly, there's a long way to go. But I'll say this, you know, these court documents today did not really speak to the central issue of this Mueller investigation, which is, did the Trump campaign collude with the Russian effort to intervene in the election? Was there coordination over those leaked emails and WikiLeaks? But you know who would know whether that happened, if in fact it happened? Mike Flynn would know, because he was in every significant meeting meeting during the Trump campaign, particularly around national security. He was in every important meeting in the first three weeks of the Trump administration. So you can bet that, you know, M Robert Mueller is expecting to hear everything that Mike Flynn may or may not know about the campaign's contact with the Russians. And don't forget there was that Wall Street Journal story that, that Robert Mueller was investigating whether Mike Flynn was part of an effort to try to find the missing Hillary Clinton emails during the campaign. So I think there's a lot left to learn about what Mike Flynn may know about what happened during this campaign, Lauren. Ken Delaney and, and Barbara Mulcahy, thank you both for joining us. Really appreciate it. Coming up, a look back at the person who tried to save Donald Trump from this day, President Barack Obama. Andy, come on. Each year, Sarah climbs 58,000 steps. Even on the escalator. Joy, he sees you behind the truck. So now she does it with Dr. Schultz with Fox, clinically proven to relieve her from the lower back pain. Reducing the shock and stress to travel up her body with every step she takes. So keep on climbing, Sarah. You're killing it. Dr. Schultz, or to move. Hey everyone, I'm Taylor. I'm Catherine. I'm okay. Are you looking for a real relationship? I'm Joy is heading right here. He's around here. He's around here. Joy, he's coming. He's Joy, pop out. Pop out. Find me. Look out. Right now. 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 I'm Alex Trebek. If you're age 50 or 85, please listen carefully. The lock I want to talk to you about isn't the lock the door. It's a rate lock for your life insurance that guarantees your rate can never go up at any time for any reason. Many policies don't have one, but you can get a lifetime rate lock through the Colonial Pen Program. This plan was designed for people on a fixed income with coverage options for just $9.95 a month. That's less than 35 cents a day. Your rate is locked in for life, and coverage can never be canceled. Your acceptance is guaranteed. You cannot be turned down because of your health. Call for your information kit and gift. Both are free with no obligation. Call 1-800-529-8100 for free information and a free gift. Or visit colonialpan.com. Call now. Joseph A. Banks weekend only specials. Reserve suits made in the USA with Italian fabrics, $2.99. Dress shirts, $29. And all Marine Oval sweaters, $39. The weekend only specials at Joseph A. Bank. To those with diabetes, mealtime is really time to think about insulin. When do I prepare? Where do I inject? But if Reza lets you inhale your insulin when food arrives, even unexpectedly, so you can be spontaneous and not rely solely on injections. Afresa is a rapid-acting inhaled insulin used to control adult diabetes. Afresa can cause serious side effects, including sudden lung problems and low potassium. Afresa is not for patients with chronic lung disease, such as asthma or COPD. Tell your doctor if you smoke, hey, yo, recently stopped smoking, hey, yo, have ever had kidney or liver problems, a history of lung cancer, or if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. Most common side hey, effects are low blood sugar, combat. cough, and sore throat. Severe low blood sugar can be right fatal. Now. Do not replace long-acting insulin with Afrezza. Afrezza is not for use to treat diabetic ketoacidosis. Do not take Afrezza if you are allergic to insulin. Get some dessert. Talk to your doctor before changing your Afrezza dose. Blood sugar may need to be checked more frequently. Ask your doctor if Afrezza inhalable insulin is right for you. To never swear like toilet. The chest won't flush. <laughs> Hard to believe that Nick Sachs used to be the best detective in all the department. Hey, can you see me? Well, here comes the fun. Well, I just had uh, the opportunity to have an excellent conversation with President-elect Trump. Uh, it was wide-ranging. We talked about some of the organizational issues uh, in setting up a White House. We talked about foreign policy. We talked about domestic policy. 
And that was the day, that was the meeting in which President Obama warned Donald Trump not to hire Michael Flynn for any job in the Trump administration. Joining us now, Betsy Woodruff, politics reporter for the Daily Beast and an MSNBC contributor, and also with us, Max Boots, senior fellow for national security studies at the Council on Foreign Relations and a former foreign policy advisor for McCain, Romney, Rubio. And Max Boot, uh, the president of the United States has to be regretting tonight that he did not take Barack Obama's advice. That's for sure, although he's, we also read that he's regretting that he didn't continue pursuing his crackpot allegations that President Obama wasn't born in, yes. in, in Kenya. So there's, he's, he has a lot of yes. regrets. It's a life sure. of regret. It's a life of regret. But yeah, no, I mean, it was pretty obvious that hiring Mike Flynn, it wasn't just President Obama. I mean, anybody who knew Mike Flynn realized this is not a guy who should be in this position, especially when you realize that, remember, in December of 2015, he went to Moscow and accepted a payment from the Russian government to sit at a table with Vladimir Putin. And of course, in the fall of 2016, while he was the chief foreign policy aide for candidate Trump, he was also taking money from the Turkish government. As we know, he was an unregistered foreign agent. So all this stuff goes, you know, the trouble of my friend goes well beyond the fact that he lied to the FBI and that he was easy. Uh, in, in complicity with, with the Russians, he needed certain all sorts of stuff that would have set off alarm bells in any kind of normal campaign. But for Trump, it was kind of business as usual. And the really disturbing thing, Lawrence, is that perhaps the fact that uh, that uh, Flynn appeared to be so corrupt was, was part of the selling point for, for Trump. He liked the fact that this guy had this entree with the Kremlin, that he had these dealings, he taking money from the Kremlin. For somebody like Trump, that would be a recommendation, whereas for anybody else, it would be a reason to jettison him instantly. I, I, I actually had not considered that, uh, Betsy, that uh, if Donald Trump could have been hearing the reasons from uh, Barack Obama why he shouldn't hire Michael Flynn, and that sounded to him like reasons to hire him. Right, and I can't speak to the conversations that the current and former president have had, but what we can say and what we know without a doubt is that this just highlights the extent to which the Trump presidency has overseen a dramatic and potentially irreversible shift in Republican foreign policy. Just about any other serious Republican candidate who ran in 2016, all those folks shared one basic view about Russia, which is that this country was a geopolitical threat to the Ukraine was unlawful, that it threatened stability throughout Eastern Europe, and that on the whole, Russia and Vladimir Putin were to be viewed with a with a I high degree of chance. skepticism and with and with a, an aspect oh, no, of being very circumspect. But with the Trump presidency, we've seen a Joy, dramatic head to like and the marked circle. shift. And I the can't thing that see really because I have to today, look just at the, at the statement of offense that came out this this morning uh, is the fact that just four just days over there, after Trump became Can president on January twenty fourth, Michael everything. Flynn, then his national security advisor sat down for an interview with the FBI and the lies that he told the FBI that he now admits to telling FBI agents was specifically about two efforts that the Trump transition team undertook to influence the Russians. We focus a lot on Russian efforts to influence American politics, but this is a case where it's actually a flip, flip, right? It's the opposite. Americans trying to persuade Russians to take certain actions. That's a massive shift in the way the Republican Party operates, and uh, I think, and I think it's a change that that Republicans are going to have trouble potentially reversing if they'd like to. I want to listen to what President Trump said about Michael Flynn just three days after Flynn was fired. Regardless of recommendation, I was going to fire Michael Flynn, and I asked for his resignation. He respectfully gave it. He didn't have to do that because what he did was it wrong? And Max Boot, we know that Donald Trump knew that what he did was wrong because Sally Yates made those two emergency trips to the White House to tell the White House exactly what Michael Flynn did. And there's the president saying what he did was wrong. And then that same president fired uh -huh. Amy Comey because yeah. he was so easy on my He's a bush. He's a bush. He's a bush right there. Oh, I told. I tried to warn you. He thinks it's wrong and vice versa. I mean, so he attacks, you know, everybody. You know, Elizabeth Warren and 